the WWE is over in the uh, in the beautiful country of Scotland. Clash at the Castle taking place on Peacock and the WWE Network tomorrow from the OVO Hydro in uh, Glasgow. Uh, Excuse me, the OVO? The OVO, yeah. Huh. The Hydro option. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, they're actually over there in that same building today for SmackDown, and the show is over with. If you go to the front page of the site, F4WOnline.com, WrestlingObserver.com, you will get to see the results if you want to be spoiled by them. No spoilers. Naomi against Chelsea Green, Meechan against Nia Jax, Sheamus against Drew McIntyre, and that's what I know of to be announced for the show tonight. Sa so. Santos Escobar taking on Apollo Crews. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Some Cody Rhodes action. I would figure he would be there. Some uh, the Grayson Waller effect has mm -hmm. been announced. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, there you go, and that all leads into tomorrow, and it's predictions time, Tom. WWE Championship. Damian Priest, Drew McIntyre, CM Punk is always lingering around somewhere. But who do you think comes out on top in this? And really, how does it happen as well, too, if you believe that it's Drew McIntyre? Are you like me and believe that the Judgment Day could see another splintering tomorrow? Or do you think he does it cleanly? Or do you think he loses? What I would hope would happen, my dirty, uh, I guess, I guess my hope, my hope for what would happen here would be Drew McIntyre about to hit the Claymore. He's counting down three, two, one. And then we get the appearance of the Gypsy King himself, Tyson Fury. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> singing his way down to the ring, distracting Drew McIntyre. And leading to Damian Priest hitting the South of Heaven chokeslam and retaining the championship. But if I was a betting man and Mike Sempervivi, I am here to tell you that I am. I would bet on Drew McIntyre walking away with the championship. I think it would be a great idea to splinter the Judgment Day. I think a version of the Judgment Day led by a heel, Drew McIntyre, at least for a portion of of the rest of 2024 would be fantastic. And Damian Priest, to me, seemingly ripe for a babyface run. So that's Agreed my prediction. 100%. Agreed on all of that. And the Universal Championship is not in doubt. I wouldn't believe Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles. I quit match. It's just a matter of how AJ is going to utter I quit. What move will Cody have him in? Will he have him in the million dollar dream? Will he will he be choking him out with a kendo stick? How is he going to make AJ Styles tap out or say, I quit? I think he's gonna put him in the calf crusher. Maybe using the maybe using the kendo stick in the calf crusher. Using that against a, him? Make AJ tap out to his own move. Has Cody does Cody have a Submission finisher? I'm sure that he does. I can't remember. Figure four leg lock? Uh, I guess so. And there's really, uh, you can't really gimmick that one up anymore. Maybe he can bring back the Indian death lock. Can Maybe he, he throws the on, the, no, lock? he could throw on the hammer jammer. The hammer jammer? What was that? The hammer jammer. It was Ron Garvin's shin brace to block the figure four <laughs> leg lock. How am I the one giving you this information, Mike? This is almost before my time, my friend. You're exactly. I didn't expect it, and I apologize uh, for, for crapping a little bit on the legacy of Greg the Hammer Valentine there, who at some point is going to join us on this show. Not today, but in the future. We'll be back, Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Semper, VV, and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. Big boss man Brian Alvarez will be back on the show on Monday going through WWE Clash at the Castle Saturday, I believe it is, on Peacock, although you can watch it anytime you want. I don't know when I'm going to watch it. Probably sometime Monday morning, the way this weekend. I'm hoping that it goes. I just won't have the time. But we've got it, it is a big weekend, Mike. We've got it is. I'm it's sure one weekend. FC today, as always on Friday. There was a PFL yesterday. UFC tomorrow. I haven't even 
gotten into pro wrestling, right? Rampage tonight, Collision tomorrow, Clash at the Castle, Noah with a big announcement by WWE on Saturday. New Japan Soul. It never ends. Three GCW shows. Ka- Katsuhiko Nakajima and Gleet. <laughs> What's that's, going that's, on here? For, for free on YouTube. You get all the free Nakajima you want. Wrestling for Gleet there, but that's they're, they're not in Scotland. WWE is Clash at the Castle. That's We've true. gone through and said Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre are going to retain and win the WWE Heavyweight Championships. Why there are two, I have no idea. Technically, there's three. Technically, there's three because Cody is the Universal and WWE champion, while Damian Priest is the world champion. This is all stupid. WWE Women's World Title, I believe it is, not the World Women's Title. Bailey defends against Piper Niven. Now, Drew McIntyre in Scotland. He's home. He gets the victory. Piper Niven against Bailey. What do you do? Oh, man. Mm hmm. I almost want to, I, ah. Feel good story. I would not hate, well, who's going to get cheered? You think Piper Niven's getting cheered here? I mean, it's pretty tough to boo Bailey. It's hard to boo Piper Niven. I mean, honestly, I know she's kind of played the, the heel role, but honestly, it's like Dewdrop was a stupid gimmick, but she's, I don't know. To me, she's a diff. She should really be a baby face, I think, but I don't know. I would, booking wise, I would pull the trigger. Yeah. Where's Bailey going after this? The whole, um, you know, culmination of Bailey turning babyface was getting comeuppance on damage control, the faction that she created and that who then turned on her. And it appeared as if she was heading towards a showdown with Nia Jax after Nia Jax was switched over brands, but it, it, it's almost as if that's been dropped uh, recently. So, you know, maybe they do see something here with another new monster in the division with Piper Niven, hopefully. She deserves it. I mean, like she said, she was a champion, a world champion before she hit the WWE. She She was... People would not... Look, she was... Obviously, you know, she's gotten better over time in some ways, but they also have not utilized her to her potential the way it could be from what we saw on the indie scene and what we saw in stardom and in other places before she joined up with WWE. You might as well go ahead and pull the trigger and go ahead and give it a shot. Who cares? You know, to me, and this is going to play into the next match we're going to talk about, I mean... Some babyface chasing her is the right way to go to me. I, I I think so, at least. And Bianca Belair is one of those people. And I know people don't want to hear this. Brian doesn't want to hear this. But this triple threat match, which has been set up, you want to talk about, you know, a feel-good story. Alba Fire, her mother yeah. passed away not all that long ago. She is coming home along with Isla Dawn, both from Scotland, and are in this match with Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark, who, I mean, yeah, I guess maybe you could give them the titles or something like that. But to me, this is all set up for Jade and Bianca to run wild in this match, look good, and then ultimately do something where Zoe Stark takes the fall to Alba Fire and the Unholy Union, as I believe that they are called, are the new tag team champions. Yeah, after the bizarre booking of this entire angle really and i i brought this up to brian as well during our show earlier this week if you remember back to smackdown they go in the backstage area and they interview bianca and jade who just walked out of adam um i'm sorry nick aldis's office they said we just had a long talk with nick aldis about this nick aldis was out ringside he was at ringside with cody and aj during this supposed conversation. So in my mind, these two ladies book themselves into this match. <laughs> they tried to take matters into their own hands, and they're the heels as far as I'm concerned, and I hope that they lose. I brought this up to Brian, um, the unholy union winning, and he seems to think that there's no way possible That's what he keeps saying here for too. it to happen. I know. But th- but this is like the only way possible actually. <laughs> really. The way that it's been set up. So and, and for why- some reason why why are we now back <sighs> with this old trope 
of the tag team partners feuding with each other all the time. I you know what I mean? That. Why are Austin Theory and Grayson Waller moving towards a split just months after they won the tag belts? Especially because they don't need to split. If it was time to actually, unless they're thinking they see something with Grayson Waller and me. Neither one of those guys theory. is ready to be a baby face. Th to me, that's what I'm saying as well, too. And to me, they're better off as a team. You need to have good teams, and they're a perfect fit for each other. The P there were people that, that pitched a fit with Waller getting called up and then him getting partnered with Theory. Why? They actually benefit each other perfectly. Theory can work a lot better than Waller, and Waller's got 10 times the personality that Theory does, so they make a good team here. So I don't know why they would go ahead and do that. I don't know that why they would want to have any tease, any tension with Bianca and Jade either. You know, to me, Jade is a special event type of person. You can bring her out right now. You can continue to put her on house shows, continue to train her, do it the best thing that you can, but she's a big match wrestler. And Bianca is somebody that I want just on SmackDown to help basically be the head of that division and to rule that division. So to me, putting the titles on Alba and Isla as they float around and face, that's the other thing. Face all these teams too that frankly aren't main eventers. They're not even mid-carders in some cases. So to me, unless you know you really want to plan to build up the division somehow, and I don't know how you do that, just go ahead and put the titles on Alba Fire, Fire, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn and make it a clean sweep for positive stories for Scotland, uh, Scottish-based wrestlers or uh, Scottish wrestlers, I should say. Anyway, Sami Zayn, go ahead. I predict Bianca and Jade retain, Thank by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I apologize. <laughs> you get off my high horse here, my rants. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.